And my lungs, my mechanical lungs, have two chambers. And all it's gonna do is when I pull this stick down, the bottom chamber that's full of air blows air in and fills the top chamber. When I let it go, that top chamber starts sinking down and blows air in. So my fire is just getting constant air. Still got a ways before I'm fully there. I'll start getting it back in the fire, putting air on it. just come up. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So I'm generally a friendly person. called a hardy cutter. It's a name because it is a hardy tool, which is what this square hole is. It is the hardy hole. So any tool that you see, it's got a square shank called a hardy tool. And we use that because that pretty much gives us a third hand as a blacksmith. Instead of me having to hold a chisel to cut, now I just have to hold the metal, hold the hammer it would be to grow a third or fourth arm as a blacksmith. I haven't been given that ability yet. Those of you that just walked up, just feel free to ask questions. I made all those on the shelf. Of course, as the Forge Blacksmith, that's a lot of what I would be doing day in and day out. Um, pretty much any piece of metal that you see outside of the weaponry was made on site. a little bit of metal. And the reason for that is when I do this final heat to 
make the head, if I go ahead and snap off this nail, instead of having all of this extra metal that I can hold on to, I only have that much. So it just makes my life easier to control that metal. Now, the reason I bent it up is at this point my shank is done. That's thinner than the head itself. So if I sit there and let that shank get in the fire, I have the chance that I actually might burn the shank and then all of my hard work goes down the drain. If I bend it up, that way it's out of the fire. And I grab my last tool that I'll use, which is this. And I've got two different versions of it. Both of them, same thing, just different sizes. And these are nail heads. And these are actually what I will use when it comes to flattening it out to make the nail head. of the fort. Now, that took me a couple minutes. Now, of course, I was talking, but even the blacksmiths, and there were about four soldiers that had blacksmiths attached to them, day in, day out, forging every nail that you see at this fort is a long, time-consuming process. And if we're lucky, we're going to start out with stock, with billet metal that's close to whatever size we want, but... We're kind of at the mercy of Charlestown and what they send us. So I could get metal like this. It's all sorts of sizes, and it's just up to me to forge it down. 